All right, guys, as you can probably hear in the background, countdown has already begun for our final series of the day. I was about to say night, but then all of a sudden I realized, yeah, it, it was 9 a.m. we started. Okay, so we have SOS versus Rain. The winner will advance on to the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne to play alongside the person who advanced in first in the form of SK Telecom's T1 Classic. So we could have double star uh, SK Telecom players there in Cologne, or we could have Jinair Greenwings representative in the form of SOS. So let's jump into game number one, as we have spawning up to the northern position as our red Protoss, representing Jinair. He is SOS. And down to the south, we have our blue Protoss, representing SK Telecom T1. It is rain. All right. Fun times here. Fun times indeed. Final PvP series to round out the day. We've had a lot of good games all morning long, and it's been a pleasure bringing them to you. From the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne qualifiers. After this, uh, in about a f in a few days' time, we'll fly out to Sao Paulo, and we'll be casting the Intel Extreme Masters Sao Paulo from Brazil. And then we get back for a week, and then we cast the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne. And then we have one day's rest, then we cast WCS Europe Premier. So lots of StarCraft action all day, every day. For the past two weeks, my life has been like non-stop 24-7 StarCraft, be it ladder, watching, playing, and writing about it as well for WCS Challenger. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. Gonna have a break for one or two days after this before we fly out to Brazil. Good stuff. Okay, so, double assimilator goes down for rain, as does it go down for SOS here at the beginning. Opportunities to do a little bit of teching. We already saw uh, that SOS was defeated and dispatched of by Classic in the upper bracket. Uh, and Classic was playing a lot of mind games, a lot of, uh, yeah, especially in the second game at least, a lot of mind games. Reigns, one of those guys that in PvP, especially at the end of Wings of Liberty, was really pioneering changes in PvP. Like, uh, for example, really building a good backbone of an army with Immortals and really never having those die off. And I would, I would contest the fact that players like Rain who did this at the end of Wings of Liberty, really laid the bricks uh, and stepping stones towards how we saw PvP uh, play out at the very beginning and mid uh, stages of Heart of the Swarm, which was actually not too many Colossi. A lot of Immortals in that. Of course, the Mothership Core with Time Warps did have something to do with this as well. Um, but Rain, he's a smart guy. He is a smart cookie. So actually pylon going down for rain behind all of this, and there's plenty of pylons and positions where these players can hide some of their tech, both at 26 of 26 supply, uh, and just continuing on with those probes. So what will we see? It looks like we're going to have Twilight Council choice here by SOS to start things off in this best of three, whilst we have the war for the ages now going on over here. Oh, 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 oh. Well... <laughs> Both these players showing how to min-max when it comes to PvP, as they're going for exactly the same builds. <laughs> so, actually, I tell a lie. Not exactly the same builds, because we have a second gateway here for Rain. Uh, so he's going for, like, the triple stalker play, which is also normal for a player of Rain's stature and caliber. Uh, whilst SOS isn't really doing too much in that regard, he throws down the... Dark Shrine so fast. Are we going to see Dark Shrine or are we going to see Blink here from Rain? He's going to be Dark Shrine as well. He throws down in the bottom left-hand corner. Oh, God. All right. Well, this is one way to open up this PvP series, I guess. Um, Dark Shrine versus Dark Shrine. Okay. And yes, I did pinch my nose for that second Dark Shrine. Uh, okay, so Robo Facility gets added on here for Rain, which is instantaneously spotted here by SOS, but he's going to try and make it work anyway. Um, 
SOS hasn't actually gone for his own robe facility just yet. He is playing a little bit. Uh, he is playing a little bit scary. He doesn't actually have even the extra gateways here, so he can only warp in one Dark Templar when this begins, which is a little bit strange. Oh, okay, sorry, that was the second gateway finishing up Derp. Um, but he does have a sentry at the top of his ramp that doesn't have energy. That's a little scary. A little scary indeed. He's adding on a third gateway behind this, and the one Dark Templar has now morphed in, but there is Corona Boost into the Observer. There's one Dark Templar also warping in here. This this really needs some weight. Let's switch to the vision of... Okay, that one's blocked. We're looking at the vision right now of SOS. He catch... Uh, Reigns... Oh, he doesn't actually catch that in the end. Where is the Dark Templar? We're still watching the vision. And... He still doesn't have detection, so... The Dark Templar gets in, and uh-oh. There you go, GG. <laughs> <laughs> he just was not watching his ramp at all. That's one of the things that I like to watch in PvP, whether or not they're actually watching the ramp if they don't have detection. Technically, that sentry did have energy for a force field to actually lock that out, and maybe by a little bit of time, he could have tried to warp in extra sentries to seal that out and then throw down a robo facility or something. But there you go. That's just how the cookie crumbles. Rain takes a 1-0 lead here in this PvP pretty quickly. Second map is going to be Frost, though. A big map, uh, very open to a lot more possibilities. Of course, we could see DTs again, but... Uh, but whilst we're getting into this game, we actually have to announce the winner of our lovely shirt uh, here. And the winner is Jarrett Schola. Jarrett Schola. I am terrible at pronouncing names. Maybe I butchered your name. I've been disconnected from the lobby. Uh, so I assume they will regame. Uh, re, please. Okay, so congratulations to Jarrett Schola. You have won a shirt, a Heart of the Swarm shirt, signed by all of the representatives at WCS Europe uh, Season 1. Yay, GG, woohoo. Okay, uh, our lovely people here at ESL will get that sent to you as quickly as possible. Uh, I'm pretty sure they've probably already contacted you. And in the future... Uh, you will get it. So, great. Okay, so we're rejoining for game number two. For some reason, we got disconnected from the lobby. Uh, very... Uh, wow, okay, that really started quickly. I wasn't even in the lobby, and I started hearing the countdown. <laughs> that kind of scared me. All right, so... Countdown's begun. Again. And we are now loading up into game number two. Rain currently in the lead, 1-0. Um, I don't think... Have I ever met... Rain. Yes, okay, I have met Rain because he actually played against Jadong at Season 2 Finals, and uh, that was something I forgot to mention when it came to Jadong winning 2-0 during that Finals. Uh, but then Rain beat him 2-0 anyway, so who cares? Uh, okay, so let's jump into this one as we have currently uh, this player fighting for his tournament life, representing Jin Air Green, Ring, Green Wings. He is SOS. And up to the top right-hand corner, we have our blue Protoss. It's SK Telecom T1 Rain. Okay, and it is cross positions, so opportunity for big, big games, big games. Um, as I say, I have a few days off uh, over the next two days, which is going to be good. I might even do some streaming, um, which will be all right. So if you'd like to follow my stream as well, that's slash Kyle Aris. It's my name. Like I keep spelling it out for people, but I'm pretty sure everyone knows how to spell it by now. Either that, or they butcher it and write calories which is, <laughs> it was so funny uh, back when I first did my proper big gig for ESL, which was the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship of all things, uh, after doing some smaller, well, like one smaller event than I did Assembly Winter, uh, one or two casts there. But it was the first ever time I cast with Sean, and he could not pronounce my name right for the life of him. Uh, so he just kept calling me calories, and I was like, thanks, Sean. My friends my friends on Ventrilla found it extremely, extremely funny. Uh, so yeah, calories, GG. Okay. So double gas gets taken for rain, and we have also double gases for SOS. Uh, SOS needs to play a little bit more safe. That was really his danger, his danger game. As he sends his first probe out into the middle of the map, he's going to scout up to this top left-hand corner and then eventually get to his opponent. Does lose a bit of mining time due to that. Uh, Rain, meanwhile, doesn't seem to give a damn. Uh, he's just going to play his own game, which is fine, uh, unless he sends that probe down in just a second. 
And yes, he is. Okay. So, um, Rain is also going to go for a scout, and he'll lose equal amounts of mining time, to be honest with you. Um, because of the fact that the spawning positions are such. It would be very strange to actually watch one person uh, in this in this situation just scout straight across uh, for a very, very uh, ambitious inkling that they would have. But technically, Rain, because he did send his probe a little bit later, loses less mining time um, in the grand scheme of things. The, the probe being sent out earlier does have the knock-on effect of you don't have m as, min mi as many minerals earlier, and then, uh, yeah, so... Long story short, rubbish. Anyway, so Twilight Council versus Twilight Council again. Uh, will they decide to go for Dark Shrines is the big question here. Now, if we see SOS actually Corona boosted out uh, a Stalker, he could have actually denied that. And, oh, you cheeky, cheeky man, Rain. You cancel your Twilight Council and you go for Stargate. All right, so right now he believes that to be a Twilight Council, but it's not. It's not, trust me. So... Twilight Council finish up for SOS. Dark Shrine again. Jeez. Crazy. Uh, <laughs> okay, so the way this can work out for Rain is very, very good. Because one, there's not going to be that many Stalkers out by the time an Oracle would get over to the other side of the map here for Rain. Did he get in there and spot what was going on? No, he didn't, sadly. The Mothership Call pushed him away. Uh, so he is going to go for an Oracle. And the thing is, is that with how this works out, Technically, if he went for a second oracle, that would be out in time. Uh, I mean, if even if he gets the oracle over here anyway, he's going to see the Dark Shrine, and he'll just start a second oracle, which will be able to defend at home. So Rain, in game number two, is already pretty far ahead in terms of the, the messing around that he's done here. Um, SOS is trying to play this out a little bit more safely, though, uh, by adding on the Robo facility, just to make sure his opponent isn't also going Dark Shrine, because he believes this to be a Twilight Council but there will be an expansion on the way here for rain. There is a pylon actually down here as well, noticeably outside of the vision of these watchtowers, just in case one stalker were to poke around and maybe touch one of those watchtowers. But now this oracle will fly in and see the dark shrine. Um, and technically he will have a robo or an oracle out at home uh, to be able to deal with this. So I don't see rain taking too much damage from it. Oracle flies in. Photon Overcharge gets activated. Huh. And did not see the Dark Shrine. Instantly gets rerouted. SOS starts his own observer. One Dark Templar is on the way. Something happened. Or he broke rocks. Uh, these units actually can't get past those. Force field. Ah, force field. Bleh. Okay, so he's Corona boosting out an observer. But he did lose two sentries in the process. I already feel that that's... Not too bad a trade, especially since he's going to get a few probes. SOS gets the lucky end of the stick here, considering that that Oracle did not just fly a little bit further to see that Dark Shrine. So that Dark Templar is going to get chased away and killed off. But he did get seven workers for his trouble, so 26 workers to 34 in favor of SOS. He's also looking to grab himself his own Stargate as well, so SOS is saying, all the tech, all the tech. It's fine by me, it's fine by me. Mm, but this also now leads him on to creating Phoenix, which will deny this initial Oracle. Uh, and then if he continues to produce Phoenix, then we may see Rain do a similar thing. Of course, the Stalkers for SOS do not have Blink. So there's not really a huge opportunity for him to move out into the middle of the map and uh, try and do what he was doing against Classic, which in the end didn't work out either too well. But the Phoenix sees that and pushes it away. And now SOS in turn starts his own Oracle. Meanwhile, we have Rain adding on Immortals. I don't know the man's preference, but I'm going to assume that he likes Immortals a lot, considering how well he's used them in the past. Uh, Maybe they're one of his favorite units. We'll have to ask him at some point. This is a question we must pose to Rain. Uh, but the Phoenix flies in, has a look around, sees that plus one weapons is already well underway. Well, I mean, it could have just started technically. And then starts his own forge, because you do not want to fall behind in terms of weapons upgrades when it comes to PvP. It just gets too far uh, gone. If Immortals and Colossi 
over you, having just normal Immortal and Colossi numbers uh, a, a piece. If they get one or two weapons upgrades over you, then uh, it's absolute catastrophe. They just dish out way too much damage for you to compete with. Unless, for example, you get a really good Zealot charge flank uh, in an open location. But the Oracle pokes in. Photon Overcharge will try and uh, deter this. And he gets one kill for his troubles. Not much more. Also, we have the Robo Bay being added on here for SOS. And Rain, interestingly enough, is going to go for Twilight Council. So he's looking to transition on to an Immortal Archon composition against an opponent that is currently looking to transition on to um, the, the, the more standard Robo Bay with Colossi. Now, all in all, this really does come down to the way in which the Mothership Call will be used by Rain once a big engagement comes. He's adding on a lot of gateways, actually. Huh. Um, how many gateways is he actually going up to? That's six gateways compared to... He's just adding on all of his gateways now, so he's going up to five in total. Okay, but he is going to have Colossi. And Fleet Beacon. How much did he spot? Did he actually... Oh, he saw the Robo Bay. Oh, he saw the Robo Bay. And he saw it pretty early, too. Ooh. Okay. Wiggly and Jiggly again. Wiggly and Jiggly. All right, Rain. Show us the way. He's going Zealot, Charge, Archon, Immortal, um, Tempests, basically, against an opponent that's going to have Colossi. And that's about it. I mean, where is his... He has two Immortals. Okay. This is going to be cool by Rain. Noticeably, he's trying to get his third base up. But the Tempests are going to come out pretty quick. Pretty quick. Um, he does need to deter that Phoenix from really getting full scouting information. And actually, that Phoenix, as well as this Oracle, both could be f uh, feedbacked, fed back, uh, whichever the, whichever to use correctly, um, and deny the any scouting information. Because right now, I mean, he, he doesn't know about the Fleet Beacon. He knows about the Templar Archive, so he's probably anticipating his opponent just going for something like the uh, uh, the Immortal Archon mixture. But with the Tempest in this comp as well, it makes for a potent, potent and deadly force. Now, Zealot Charge is just about to finish up here. And it looks as if SOS is actually going to move to punish this third. Because he did see the pylon down there. There's no reason anything else will be there. And he's also got a reinforcing pylon as well. So he also does know his opponent's army positioning. So there's no way he can hold this base. But behind this, SOS doesn't really have his own third base on the way either. This wall off is going to buy him a little bit of time. He really needs another Tempest down. He does reveal the Tempest. That instantly pulls SOS back. He's like, oh, do I really want to contend with this? If I lose my Colossi, I, uh, then I cannot take this engagement head on. So he falls back. He's going to get his own fleet beacon as well as Tempests. Um, but f for there, for that moment, for then, the now, um, if you are going up against a Protoss with Tempests and you do not have Tempests yourself, you do have to play cautiously. There's nothing in your arsenal that can really close the gap with those Tempests uh, and then force them away. So they are now abundantly clear here to SOS, who tries to transition against them. Third base is going to go down at a very, very similar time uh, for one another. Uh, but Rain does not know about this pylon over to the right-hand side, and that can become a bit of a hindrance um, if it's allowed to stay alive. Rin did a good job of sniffing out these other pylons on the map, uh, but in the end, unfortunately for him, uh, is not able to clean them up as his opponent currently has mid-map control. I think he could probably force away mid-map control from his opponent. Uh, could rain even, I should say, um, because now he's going to have quite a few Tempests out. But SOS is trying to build double Tempest to catch up with his opponent. So this is a tough thing for SOS to really deal with. He's transitioned on nicely, though. 
Unit counts right now 51 workers to 60 in favor of Rain. And his weapons upgrades are vastly superior. If if we see that plus three weapons come into action and he uses the timing revolving around that plus three weapons, then he can put on a lot of pain. A lot of pain indeed. Now, of course, for the ground-based army here, I would argue actually that SOS is uh, composition with those two colossi maybe if he adds on a third but i don't see why he would when tempests are uh, uh, present on the map then those two colossi with plus two weapons do make a big difference uh, against even a plus three army the fact that we don't see any colossi in this army for rain i mean so very very equal game right now in game number two sos does certainly not want to lose out on an opportunity to head over to cologne to participate in a twenty-five thousand dollar tournament and also a big part of qualifying for Cologne is that you can try, uh, if you win it, you instantly gain access to uh, the championship, the world championship in Katowice. All right, well, now still positioning themselves. SOS is a little bit supplier blocked there, but it'll crack out of that in a bit. Whilst just moving on around. How many Tempests do we have? Five versus five. Technically, Rain's Tempests have a lot more work to do because they also have to work on the Colossi. But Rain is keeping a good eye on his opponent's army here with the Observer. Um, hum, 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 hum. Where are you, Observer? Okay. Well, we found out that pretty easily. <laughs> uh, good job, Tempests. And now SOS looking to pressure through the middle. Unit counts. Still 58 workers to 51. The income for Mr. Rain is a little bit better. He's the Rain Man. But can he predict that his opponent is now moving through the middle of the map? He's setting himself up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, loses one Tempest there very quickly. Two SOSs. The Colossi going to go to town on this. But how well can this work out? These Archons on the right-hand side for Rain could quite easily close the gap with some of these Tempests and kill them off very, very quickly. And indeed, he does get one. He's going to try and bring down a few more. The army of Rain continues to move on through. And it looks like he's going to make this work. I mean, he has plus three weapons compared to the plus two that we see here from SOS. The two Colossus from the back here for SOS doing a lot of work. But in the end, it doesn't bring down the army numbers that we see from Rain as he takes out the entirety of this and these two colossi are dead and they are sitting ducks even the pylon goes down good folks fired making sure not to chase that down one dt or two dts here for sos are trying to hold this at bay as well as a few more so they will try and hold this back for now but rain takes a decisive victory in the middle map engagement Meanwhile, we had a warp prism down to the south here that's trying to do some work, trying to kill off that robe of Silty. Um, the DTs should be able to clean that up, though, as it doesn't have any detection with that warp prism to speak of. So now we have seven DTs, and that is all the SOS actually has, realistically, in terms of an army. Rain is just going to warp in a few more Archons. And then maybe, 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 maybe go for this, because he realizes how much damage he did to his opponent's army. Uh, where are we looking? There we go. 74 army supply against 38. And Rain is now looking to punish his opponent's third base. And then from there, he could quite happily just go home and constrict him. Even using this warp prism for the warpins, there's a few pylons down to the south. If he wants to warp in some zealots, then bring that warp prism down to pick those up and go straight on in. But this one Colossus is going to have to do a lot of work here for SOS if he has any hopes of staying alive. Also, those four Archons trying to buffer against that many zealots. They do have plus one armor as well. It's 3-1 against 2-0. SOS is sufficiently inferior when it comes to those upgrades. He throws down the time warp. He slows down all the Archons, throws down the zealots, uh, slows down the Colossi even, I should say. The now is being warped in all the way around. Rain with a superb engagement absolutely obliterates SOS and GG. Rain will advance on to the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne. Whew. So that is going to do it for me here, guys. It's been a long day's worth of games here for the qualifier, but it's been a pleasure to bring them to you. It's always a little bit tough uh, to solo cast through all, all of this. But now, guys, we can actually show you the full bracket and show you exactly what has gone on today. So let's jump right to that. As we do see up in the upper bracket, as you can see, Classic advancing through Jadon, Pig, Curious, and then SOS to finally claim himself that first place spot. And then from that point on, the lower bracket here 
as SOS, unfortunately, at the very end, was not able to topple the might of Rain, who actually was defeated by SOS in that upper bracket. But then Rain gets his vengeance and will advance on to Cologne as well. So congratulations to Classic and Rain. We'll be seeing them in Cologne in a few weeks' time. As for those, that's it for our broadcast. Our next stops in terms of StarCraft casts will be in the Intel Extreme Masters Sao Paulo, so make sure to tune in for that. Uh, but also, guys, don't forget to head over. If you live in the area or if you want to fly in, go to iem-cologne.eventbrite.com where you can get your tickets for the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne as well. So that's going to do it for us. If you'd like to check out more of what I do, please follow me at Kyle Aris on Twitter. I'm going to have a few days rest, rest up my throat a little bit, and then I'll see you in Brazil. Bye for now.